Hello comic fans, here's Earl Grey with a final list with my favorite comics from 2023. And finally, I talk about the new, new books. My favorite 12 comics that saw the light of day in 2023. Oh well, actually it's 13 comics in one top 12. Confusing? Have trust in me, it will all make sense in the end. On 12 is Human Target that I bought in single issues, my only foray into proper superhero territory, or halfway proper superhero territory, since it's rather a crime and love story, cleverly written by Tom King, but actually I was not really blown away by the story. Nice premise and twists, but treading too much water, in my opinion. The story could have been over and done with in maybe half of the 12 issues, but they filled these 12 issues with just gorgeous art by Greg Smallwood, whose coloring alone makes it easy to forgive some of the unne unnecessary parts of the story. So yeah, well-deserved rank 12. On to rank 11, and a collected edition that I've been looking forward to for literally a decade, since the first trade of Manifest Destiny came out. And I had decided back then to play the hardcover trade waiter game on that. The weird adventures of Captain Merriweather and Captain Clark exploring the uncharted American frontier around 1800 triggered my fancy. A quite intriguing story and totally bonkers at the same time. This was absolutely up my alley and still is like I could confirm after reading the whole chunk of the first 24 issues collected in this brick of a book. Night Fever on rank 10 got mixed reviews. Mixed reviews for a book by Sean Phillips and Ed Brookbaker, that is, they usually get nothing but praises for their crime comics, but some found Night Fever unbelievable especially the ending. Well, without spoiling anything, I would counter that assessment and say that this ending probably would have been possible in the late 70s, the time in which the story takes place. I don't say that it would have been very likely, but possible. I found another thing quite unrealistic instead. Or let's say cliché, the idea of European, in quotes, nightlife and parties is very very superficial and James Bond like to me. So it fits that you take a while to figure out whether the story takes place in Italy or France. Well I know it's supposed to be in France but that's not my case. But there's one aspect that I very appreciated and that lifted this comic onto rank 10 is the almost iconic treatment of a man in his midlife crisis. The main character has almost a complete meltdown within a couple of pages. And he stays in the Hotel Terminus, which should give you a hint about the mythological aspects of this book. On the bottom line, it's not a flawless, but breathless and quite exciting quick read that makes you think, even if you don't buy every plot point necessarily. On 9, it's Ice Cream Man, drawn by Martin Morasso, written by W. Maxwell Prince, colored by Chris O'Halloran, with the first 12 issues of this horror comic. The Sunday edition, Volume 1, actually feels rather like an anthology by one creative team than one continuing narrative, despite there is a clear story thread connecting almost all of the stories, but Prince obviously tries to create a unique MO for each issue. Be it that he plays with panel arrangements or with a story about a poor guy who has to endure eternal wakening, sort of, Sandman style, maybe, kind of. But all he ever does is to switch into another reality live show on TV which is funny and horrific at the same time. But my favorite story within this book is the one about the girl who goes into the woods to find a nightmare and a possible reason why we need horror stories like these to make us stronger and to face reality. On eight, I've 
Uh, I have two stories in single issues, both adding up to the Metkind cosmos of mind management. There's a mind management bootleg combining the talents of Harold Dalrymple, David Rubin, Matt Lesniewski and Jill Thompson. Obviously a group of artists who could draw the telephone book and I would be interested. Remember telephone books? Anyways, Spy Superb has been drawn by the much more raw draughtsman, Matt Kind himself. When I say raw, I mean this as a compliment. It's an almost perfe perfect addition to the world of mind management. By the way, I even got the mind management board game last year. That's a blast as well. Wonderful design and really fun to play. Just saying. Rank 7 is the last work by Jesse Jacobs called New Pets about, well, new pets, the last craze pet shops have to offer. Little cute animals who are actually not really that cute, I'd say, but terrifying, even if they are surprisingly interesting from a biological point of view. This is a beautiful comic in a well-designed edition by the Italian mini-publisher Holopress. Amazing how Jacobs manages to adapt his peculiar antics every time to create outstanding stories that are easy to understand and very out there at the same time. On rank 6 uh, there are these one-man anthologies called Black Phoenix and the one man is Rich Tommaso, doing quite wonderful homage to old crime comics in volume 1 and to romance comics in volume 2 both with a slight dash of horror comics as well. He's all about recreating the special style and atmosphere of these comics, or rather adapting that into his own style, because whatever he does is clearly and obviously Tommaso. Even if I wished that he would rather continue his stories, he is far more into telling the beginnings and premises of different stories. Most of them won't be finished by him, apparently, but you can figure out the continuations in your own head. I talked quite a bit about Rich Tommaso's Black Phoenix in Penology 517, so if you want to have a deeper look into these anthologies, check that out. No European creators so far in this video's list, but this changes now with Thorgal Saga, Adieu Arishia, Thorgal Saga is a new series of standalone stories by different creators adding to and enriching the Viking world of Thorgal, one of the best comic series ever written and told. Adieu Arishia is in a way old man Thorgal in grief about the death of his wife, burying her Viking style, but then he gets a twisted proposal by Nidhögr, the snake god. I don't want to say more about the story, which is obviously aimed at long-time Thorgal readers who will feel the emotional oomph much more and who can appreciate the clever use of the familiar and the rather unfamiliar characters. But I would recommend this comic even for newbies to the Thorgal wars. I mean, you have to start with Thorgal sooner or later, just you have to. And Robin Recht's art in this tome proves that he is a worthy successor of the great Gregor Ruszynski. On rank 4, there's the dream bestiary of Mr. Providence by the French Daria Schmidt, in which we meet H.P. Lovecraft as a caretaker of a park, the guardian of a park, filled with his own hallucinations and phantasms. It's wonderfully rendered in black and white with colorful intermissions indicating the intrusion of Lovecraft's fantasy into our world. Very ambiguous and definitely a comic that you want to read twice, thrice or even more because you will always discover new details and hints to the works of Lovecraft that Schmidt had laid out for us. There are many, many books devoted to Lovecraft, but this is already one of my favorite Lovecraft adaptations ever. Well, if you could call this very unique homage to his works an adaptation. However, then we have the tea bag in bronze of 2023 and it goes to 
sorry for that, a quite obscure European comic published by an even more obscure mini outfit called Colorama in Berlin. But the Colorama edition is in English and they are still available despite printed in risograph technique, which usually equals a low print run. So if you order from Colorama books directly, you can still get the whole bunch of, to be honest, rather flimsy soft covers. But Sunday by Olivier Schrauven is not so much about the production or presentation, but about the story, the cinematic techniques Schrauven uses, the unbelievable original narration. What he does with the panels, texts and drawings is almost unreal in places. Not in your face splatter effects or whatever, but subtle and nevertheless uncompromising and brutal observations of one Sunday in the life of the main character Thibault at the brink of his 36th birthday. I spoke about Sunday and some other stuff by Colorama and Panadarchy 518. Did you like Day Tripper by Fabio Moon and Gabriel Bar? Well, here's more of this kind of heart-wrenching stuff, even though The Many Deaths of Leila Star follows its own narration paths and has a lot of unique ideas. It still bears some slight similarities, at least on the surface. But to close this comparison with Day Tripper, I just have to say that I liked Leila Star even more. But regardless, both are fantastic comics, of course. This book drawn by Filippi Andrade and written by Ram V is a real trip of a book, starting in a wonderful absurd manner with an hip Indian female version of death being summoned and eventually fired by her douchebag god boss. He has no use for her since it is written that one human will find the means of everlasting life. In order to get her job back, the former Death now tries everything to kill this particular human being. So far so wonderfully absurd, but believe me, in the run of just five issues, this book has become a real tearjerker for me. A philosophical, beautiful piece of pure art, shining in the lush colors by Ines Amaro. To be totally fair, the many deaths of Leila Star should have been number one on my list here, and in my opinion, actually, it should be number one on everybody's list. But well, lists are subjective, and for me, there was just this unforeseen and magic continuation, respective conclusion of Jacques Tardy's The Extraordinary Adventures of Adèle Blancsec. It's the 11th album in this weird cycle of stories around Tardy's tough heroine set in the time before and after the First World War. Adele, or Adele fights mad scientists, some revived pterodactylus, mummies, occult mobsters and countless other criminals in one continuing and deliberately loose yet cramped narration. It's really a don't get it, I don't get it, or I love it thing, for me clearly the latter is the case, as maybe the self-made slipcase proofs that I made for the whole series. Well, that was it for the year 2023. On to a new year filled with wonderful old and new comics. Thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.